Today I'm feeling in the mood to flip this cabinet door into something else to give it some new life. At a time that I was painting cabinets, this was a sample door, an antique style door um, that I did for a customer to help them pick what style cabinets I was gonna do for them. And this has spent years in my shop basement, just kicking around. And I brought it here to the house. I didn't wanna throw it out. Instead, I figured let's go ahead and paint it, give it some new life, give it a new purpose. And with the change in the weather, I just feel like painting maybe some more pumpkins. And today I'm thinking specifically a vintage truck. So I love those old vintage style trucks. You know, you see them everywhere this time of the year. And I thought, let's do our own version. We'll do it nice and simple. And I hope you guys will get inspired to do your own as well. So now I am just pulling out a bunch of my favorite colors and I'm going to get my colors all pulled out so I can begin bringing this truck to life. And I love the colors of Stormy Forest. I love the colors of maybe some Ducky. And of course I'm gonna, I've already got my vintage white put out. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull out our favorite colors. This is what I love to see when you guys paint these tutorials yourself and then I get to see what colors you love and what you put on them. So if you guys are painting these tutorials along with me over on Facebook, if you go to Junk Monkey Paint Projects, that's our sharing group for all the projects that you do with the Junk Monkey Paint. So maybe I'll see you there. So for this project, I am going to grab my handy dandy palette knife. I love the look the palette knife gives me. It gives me this really cool shabby and perfectly perfect look, which is what I love and love to play with. When I lay out my favorite colors on my paint tray, I always put a lot more white on my tray because as you can see, my one of my favorite looks that I love to do is combining white with the color on your palette knife when you go to put it down and it gives you this really cool marbled, it's got highlights to it. It just makes you feel like your piece has automatic dimension. And of course, using the paint will give you lots of texture and you can build it up. So it is the palette knife and the Junk Monkey paint is literally a marriage made in heaven. So I am laying down right now some ducky and vintage white and filling out my vintage truck. Next up, I'm gonna grab for my mouse in the house and it is just a really pretty light gray color. And the parts I'm filling in now of my truck is the back windshield, the gray bumper. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think I also do the tires in just a second. So just adding in some gray to a couple truck parts here. Next up, I'm on to tackle the pumpkins. So I picture a bunch of 
pumpkins in the back of this truck. You can do one big one and a small one, whatever placement you wanna do. And I also know that your eye likes to see repeating colors, and so don't just put pumpkins in the back of the truck. Think about putting them on the ground, around the truck, or just anywhere you wanna put them, right? Um, the other thing to tell you is I'm using a color called watermelon, but you can use any color you want. Whether you wanna keep it towards the pink, orangey, peach family, like for traditional pumpkins, go for it, but they can be some fun ones too. So if you wanna make teal pumpkins, yellow pumpkins, listen, do whatever floats your boat. All right, let's add in a little greenery here. So I'm just grabbing some Lucky Clover mixed with some white. Again, you can do whatever color grass you want. You can do like yellow hay, hay, whatever you wanna do, all right? So just putting some greenery around the pumpkins you saw on the stems there. You could do brown stems as well. Honestly, you know, you don't have to stick with traditional colors. That's what's so fun about being creative. Use the colors that you have because you can make it whatever you wanna make it. All right, now I'm adding in a little bit of brown. Um, you know, maybe for grounds, you wanna th think about using grays or browns. Um, adding some black into it to create some shadow, indicating dirt or shadow below the truck, below the tires on the back of the truck. So that's what I'm working on right now, adding in some brown to represent the earth, the ground below the truck. It's really fun to build up your layers and that's what makes this piece look so cool in the very end. Now I'm doing one of my techniques to really make it come to life and talking about those layers and really building them up. What I like to do is after I've laid down my color and just filled out the general parts of whatever it is that I'm painting, I will take my palette knife and I'll stand it on its edge you can kind of see the edge there, and I'll dip it back into my black paint and just start tracing out all the parts that make it up. Because when I lay down my palette knife of, of any of those colors, sometimes it covers back over the black outline that I laid down. So I like to build up, this is just a something that I love to do, I love to keep building up those shabby layers, and it creates a shadow, it creates a general outline, and but just doing this part, really will, will make your painting pop in the end. All right, so while our painting is drying in here, I don't wanna to touch it too much because it'll just completely gray out and marble because everything is still wet. I'm gonna let it set up a little bit and then I'm gonna go back in and add some more detailing to it. But I love how it's just coming together right now. So I think I'm just gonna grab a brush that I have nearby. I've got some vintage white on my uh, tray here next to me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up this piece. You saw me put some dark colors out first. Now I'm going to swipe over in some vintage white to really lighten up this piece. Keep it shabby style. I don't care if a little bit of like my watermelon got in here. I just want it shabby style. So not looking for full coverage. I like some of those dark colors coming through. It's giving me a little bit of a pink look because I've got some watermelon mixed in with my white, but I'm just using up the remnants of what I have left on my tray there of paint. Gotta make use of it all, right? Ooh, that's pretty. What do you guys think? Sometimes the best creations just happen. Just because there's a chance of two colors touching each other on your plate or your tray. Oh, that's pretty. So whatever color background I have, definitely looking shabby chic now, but whatever color background I do will pull um, the color from the center out of it. So now those pumpkins, that color of watermelon is gonna look really soft.
Now, same technique, but instead of going in with the black, let's add some highlights. So now we got the shadows created. Now we're adding vintage white to again, lighten it up. And it really creates all these different shades and values of colors that come together so cool. I've also decided to add a little bit more of that vintage white to the outside of the frame. So you see me go ahead and just uh, brush on some out over the edge. I have gone bananas, my friends. And now I am just bringing up some color around the edges to really fill in my little painting here uh, with some more of the watermelon color. So I think it fills it out quite nice, pretty happy with this. Who is going to try this tutorial? Who's gonna make it happen? I cannot wait to see your creation. Oh, and don't forget your backlights and your license plate.